How does what you're doing differ from the, the systems that are already available, such as the full one there? Um, specifically to full one there, that uses a uh, laser rather than stereo vision, but there has been some stereo vision implementation. So, <coughs> work I've done isn't uh, a new idea, mm -hmm. um, but I'd like to use an observation with fuzzy set controller to, to explore that. Yes, uh, you said that uh, you use station DC space to uh, decrease um, compli yeah, complication, but at the end you probably use more because first you have to convert the space, which is I think higher than even checking the threshold. Then you use two thresholds. You have to use two th thresholds from the beginning and that's it. That is true. Um, it reduces the computational complexity because we're recognising a simple uh, feature, which is colour. If we were to <coughs> use other approaches such as the path transport or various other techniques which have been used for vehicles, which are to um, identify the symmetry of the vehicles and use techniques such as that, they're a bit more um, complicated to compare to that. So really the HSV is um, Simplifying the process of recognizing the color. Yeah, I think what Steve is saying is not the it's, it's not simple compared to not converting the RGB. It's simpler because you don't have to do the additional analysis using the yeah. off track form, which is a lot more computationally complex than converting an, an image type a color space. And the other is uh, when you um, try to keep a fixed distance. Sorry, the, the center of the wall, then do you use one of the cameras to do that, or do you try to keep the center of the, of the pair of the dish? Uh, the pair. Do you try to keep one in one side and one in the other? The uh, position of the ball is located in the 3D environment, mm -hmm. <coughs> and so the angle to that uh, 3D coordinates is located. Mm -hmm. The idea is to reduce the angle to zero in both directions. Mm -hmm. both to do that. <coughs> you can record the trajectory of the leading vehicle uh, as a plan your path or according to that. Uh, you can also use waypoints, similar sort of technique to do that as well. Um, so yeah, there are, there are ways to work on that. How much do they add to the complexity? I don't know. It's, the approach we've taken is quite simple just by changing the direction. Um, so I imagine, imagine quite a bit of if you're having to track vectors through 3D mm -hmm. space, that's going to be a lot of maths. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, when, when the vehicles were in that position and you were uh, measuring the distance with uh, the laser ranger, then the laser ranger did, did automatically find the vehicle in any, in any space, or you have to process the data also offline? Uh, yeah, we have to process the data offline. Um, simple way to do this is just identify the closest point to the vehicle. So how much the effect of the size of the property of the robot is affect the laser ranger? Because they are in the same range. In one meter set point, or an error of one meter, the size of the corner of the robot, the width of it, and the uh, is relatively... The height of the, um, uh, the laser is that it's pointed towards the pan tilt unit, mm -hmm. so you don't forget the, the whole base of the robot. Thanks for your time, Michael.